Hey friends, welcome back. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into time intelligence in Power BI. So DAX functions related to any kind of time comparisons, like for instance, visualizing or comparing the sales of the last year regarding the sales compared to this year. Let's do that. Let's first actually name this page. Let's call this uh, dates for now. And let me just click on the plus symbol here to simply add a new page in here. So let's actually visualize something. Let's say again, we would like to see the, in this case, let's go with the products or let's actually go with the dates. Uh, that's more important here. So let me just make this smaller, this smaller for now and go with the dates here. And I leave the, the hierarchy in place here because as I said, we have a small model and here it's much easier to work with the auto date time uh, uh, table, which gets created in here. So let me take this, take this option here for dates and we'll use a table again just to see that better. Let's actually get rid of the day and also get rid of the quarter so you can remove elements from the hierarchy if you want to do that. So we can only see the year and the month level. By the way, if you are interested how to get actually those levels back, if you remove them, what you could do is you can right click here, go to show all levels, take this option here, and then they are, got, they are there again. So how you get them back. Let me remove them one more time. And then let's actually go to the formatting option here as well. And let's go for the value section here and just make sure that this is a little bit bigger so you can set, see this better on your screens. Let's go with 15 here, okay? All right, so we can see all the month year combinations in the data set. So far, so good. Let me go back to the visual view in here. So now I'd like to add one of my measures and let's say I'm using the total sales. So I go with total sales. I can either tick the box here or I can drag and drop it inside here the value section. And then I can see here the total sales here for each month year combination. This works because we have the relationship set up correctly between the dates table and our sales table. So far so good. Now, what if I like to know what are the sales in the prior year? So for January 2020, of course, we don't have any data. That's why this would be blank. But let's say we would like to analyze here January 2021, which is 944,000 and so on. And we would like to compare this to the same period in the last year, which is in this case, January 2020, this 1.24 million or 024 million, which means that obviously our sales went down. And uh, how can we well compare this now? Well, uh, to this value here, well, we could use DAX and time intelligence. So let's right click on a measures table here and say we'd like to create a new measure. Take this option and there's the measure. And let's say now we calculate the total sales, total sales, and I call it LY for last year. It's up to you. You can name this whatever you want, but I would encourage you to give it a proper name. So equal, and now we can use the, in this case, a specific function, which is very, very important. And we will use this function a lot and you also in your reports later on, if you create DAX measures, you will use this function a lot. We will use the so-called calculate function. Calculate, if I type in calculate here, this is the most powerful function in DAX. Because calculate, if I take this option, you see that what it does, it evaluates an expression. Expression is referring to a DAX measure. So it's most often. So it's evaluating a measure, but in a context modified by filters. And this is the main key, modified by filters. That means we can change the specific filter context of an expression. Now, the question might occur, okay, what is the filter context? Well, that's a good question. Well, the filter context is always available inside a visual. So for instance, here in our current table, the filter context, for instance, for this specific row, showing this 960,000 and so on, is October 2020. So this is the filter context we have. And that's why we can see this number and not the 25 million and so on, because we filtered the sales based on October 2020. Now, of course, if we want to show, for instance, for October, uh, in this case, we don't have any data in uh, October 2019, but let's go to our original example, January 2021. That is the filter context here. And it shows us exactly the 944,000 which is the total amount of sales for January 2021. If we want to show now next to that the sales of January 2020, then we need to modify the filter context. We need to change it. 
because otherwise we can't display the sales of 2020 if there is a year 2021 in the context. So to do this, we need the calculate function because calculate allows us to change this context. And so we can say we would like to see our expression, which is in our case, the total sales. So total sales, this one here. And now we can give it a new filter context, meaning we can override what it's already there. So instead of using, for instance, here, uh, January 2021, we can say we want to see it for January 2020. So that means that the calculate function will then override the existing context, which is here. And we can do this by simply using the same period last year function. That's the function here. Let me take this option. And you see that it returns a set of dates in the current selection from the previous year. That means what it basically does, it, it goes one year back. What it needs is a date column in here. And here we're referring to our dates table and there the date itself. So we can use dates table and in the dates table, we use the date column, this one here. Then we can close our calculation here and also close the calculate function. And that is basically our calculation. So again, it means please calculate the total sales, but in a new context, not the context you have inside the visual. By the way, this could be a table, but could also be a bar chart, whatever kind of visual you have, but change the current filter context, which is displayed here and change it to, in this case, one year back, showing in this case, January, 2020 for the specific column we have in here. Now, if I press enter to evaluate that, we have now created a new measure, which is called total sales. I can select it. Also make sure that I format this properly. I click on the dollar symbol in here. So it's so I formatted. It. And now if I want to add this to my visualization, I can simply click on total sales last year, edit. And you see that now for 2020, it is simply blank. The reason is because there is no sales in uh, the prior year. In 2019, there's no data. But here in January 2021, as you can see here, we got 1.024 million, which is exactly the same value as one year before, this one here. And then for February, we got 989,000 and so on, which is this value here and so on. So this is your first time intelligence function in Power BI, the so-called same period last year function, which allows us to swap basically the current filter context one year back and then display the values in here. And then this of course is true here as well. And for instance, for 2022, we don't have any sales data here anymore, but you see that this exactly the same value here, 984, which we've seen here in the prior year in April, 2021 this value here. So that's how that works. And of course, we can now again, simply calculate the difference if we're interested in that. So we can make this bigger. And if I go to the measures table, right click here, go to new measure, and then I could simply say um, sales difference like that. And I can simply say, I want to see the total sales, total sales uh, from my measures table, this one here. And I can simply subtract the total sales last year, this one here, then press enter. And then this measure is also there. And so let me click on it. Let's format it on the measures tool, click on the dollar symbol in here. So we're good to go. And now if I select my table and I click on the sales difference here, click on it, then you see here, you got exactly the difference in here, right? So you see here this is negative and February is also negative, but in March, for instance, we had higher sales in uh, 2000 and 21, which is this value here compared to this one here, because the difference here is positive, right? And that's the way how this works. Okay. So um, now congratulations, what we did, you learned something new, you applied the calculate function, you calculate the sales for the last year. So you used a time intelligence function in here. And then of course, you also calculate the difference. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you were able to follow along. As always, try it out yourself. That's the most important thing if you want to learn DAX and Power BI. And otherwise, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.